despite me actually enjoying the Black Panther movie for the most part, I'm pretty sure this video is still going to tick off some Black Panther fans. Here we go. What's up, ladies and gentlemen, your friendly neighborhood ELT. There we go. Your friendly neighborhood ELT here, and let's talk the Black Panther movie, since that seems to be the hot topic all around the interwebs, and just because, you know, I'm a, I'm a fan, I'm a Marvel fan, comic book fan, and whenever it's MCU, you know I'm in. So I saw the movie when it came out on Friday, February 16th, 2018, and I didn't really want to make a review like most people do. They make reviews like immediately after they see the movie. They come home and make a review slash reaction video to it. Uh, I didn't want to do that. I just like to give you know my thoughts some time to digest. Now, when I did see the movie, I did tweet out my initial reaction, and that was that I thought the movie was good. I thought it was just another good movie, and for the most part, my thoughts are pretty much still the same. It's just another good Marvel movie, but there's just a few things about this movie where upon really giving it some time and just really thinking about it, there were a few things about this movie that kind of bugged me. Now, firstly, I don't really want to get involved into the whole political side of things that are going on with this movie, just because it's beyond ridiculous at this point. You got the left praising this movie as the world's greatest creation, and you even got some idiots out there that are saying that if you're white, don't go see this movie because you are going to suck the black joy out of the theaters with your white privilege. What? Then you got people on the right saying that this movie is nothing but a bunch of political propaganda and that the movie's garbage. And you know, at this point, for us normal people that are in the middle, it's just like, could the left and the right just shut the fuck up and let us enjoy our superhero movies. Please, just shut up. However, I will say one thing about this whole political bullshit that's going on with this movie that I did think was kind of funny, and it's the fact that some movie critics, you know, within the mainstream media and everything, are saying things like, this is one of the most diverse movies out there. And you're just like... Diverse? 90% of the cast is African American. Last time I checked, when 90% of a cast is one race or one culture, that's not diversity. Now, obviously, it makes sense for 90% of the cast to be African-American because this movie, for the majority, does take place in Wakanda, and Wakanda is the MCU Marvel's fictional version of Africa. So, 90% of this cast being African-American makes complete sense. However, it's still not diversity. If we were to be making the movie in Mexico and 90% of the cast was Mexican... It makes sense, but it's not diversity. Or if we were making a movie in China and 90% of the cast was Chinese, again, it makes sense, but it's not diversity. So what would a diverse movie actually be? Well, if you were to take 100% of the cast and let's just say 20% of that cast was African American and 20% was Caucasian, 20% was Hispanic, 20% was Asian, and 20% was Indian. There you go. That's a diverse movie because you have a, a whole bunch of different races and cultures within one movie. There's a diverse movie. A movie where 90% of the cast is one race or one culture? It's not diversity. I hate to break it to you, MSM, 
Actually, I really don't mind breaking anything to you, but yeah, it's not diversity. But anyway, how about we put all that political nonsense just aside and let's talk about a good superhero movie, another great Marvel movie. Now, before I get into spoiler talk, because there is a lot of things that I do want to say about this movie that do involve spoilers, so if you don't want to be spoiled, let me just say this before I get into spoiler talk. It's a good movie. You should go see it. If you like the Marvel movies, if you are a fan of the MCU, it's another good Marvel movie. If you're just a fan of these superhero movies in general, definitely go see it. It's a good movie. has some good fight scenes. Characters are really good, even though I'll get into more detail in my spoiler talk. But just go see it, alright? It's a good movie, and that's my spoiler-free review of this movie. Just make sure that you do go into seeing this movie with lower expectations, as I'm pretty sure you'll actually end up liking the movie a lot more that way. Don't go in there riding this hype wave that the mainstream media has been building up as this most amazing, mind-blowing movie that you'll ever see. Just lower the expectations going into the theater, and you'll probably end up enjoying this movie even more. Alright, with that being said, let's now get into some spoiler talk with this movie, which is pretty much my few problems that I have with this Black Panther movie. There are two things in particular that really kind of bugged me with this movie. One of those things is the villain of this movie, Killmonger. Now, Michael B. Jordan did a great job with this character, and every time he's on screen, you pay attention to him, you're interested in what his motives are, what his backstory is. So what's the problem? Well... He shows up in the beginning of the movie, and it's a pretty cool entrance to this villain, and then he's just gone. And you're just left there like, where'd he go? What's what's he up to? What's what's going on? Where is uh, where's Killmonger? And it's so weird, because, hey, I was interested in this guy. Where is he? And the movie just spends way too much time focusing on this other side villain, Claw, who you really don't care about that much. And then it seems like an hour or so later, because I was checking my watch in the theater, it seems like an hour later, Killmonger shows up, then the movie starts picking up again, and then the movie's over. So I think that this movie could have been a lot better if they focused more on Killmonger and cut out some of the Claw stuff, which... For the most part, was kind of just like making the movie drag. Now, my second biggest problem that I have with this movie is the Black Panther, T'Challa. He is weak as hell in this movie. And you're just left scratching your head going, This is the king of Wakanda? What happened to him? T'Challa gets his ass kicked a lot in this movie. So, first of all, in the beginning of this movie, it's been like a week after Civil War, and his father's dead, and he's on his way to becoming the new King of Wakanda. And, uh, by the way, shout out to the amazing Lucas, who made a video talking about how T'Challa wasn't really much of a hero in this movie, and kind of really doesn't deserve to become king of Wakanda, and you should definitely go check out his video as he gets into a lot more details about that. But yeah, during his crowning king ceremony, he does end up getting challenged by Umbaku, and Umbaku literally pushes T'Challa to the edge. Not just figuratively, but literally he pushes him to the edge of a waterfall, and T'Challa gets lucky, and luck, by the way, plays a huge factor into this movie with uh, T'Challa as the Black Panther. So he pretty much gets lucky and is able to put Umbaku into a submission hold to make him tap out. So no more challengers, he's the new king of Wakanda. Then you fast forward a little bit into this movie and you get that whole chase scene with uh, Claw that we've seen in the trailers a lot, it's that cool car chase scene. And he does end up catching Claw but he pretty much had his hand held throughout the entire time 
with his sister not only being behind the wheel driving, but also his sister's high-tech suit that she made for him, you know, that vibranium suit. It's bulletproof, and it does all those other cool things that we saw. But also the Warriors, and in particular, Michonne's character from The Walking Dead, and I'm just going to end up calling her Michonne because I forgot what her actual name was in this movie. But she did most of the work during that chase scene, and it's just like... T'Challa gets most of the credit because he's king. And when you really think about it, he does end up catching Claw, but then Claw just ends up escaping during his interrogation. So it's like, way to go, King of Wakanda. You had one job. Like, you literally had one job, and that was to catch Claw and bring him back to Wakanda to get justice, and he failed to do that. So then you keep on fast-forwarding in this movie, and this is where, finally, Killmonger comes back, and he goes to Wakanda, still don't know how, but he gets to Wakanda to challenge T'Challa, yeah, T'Challa, <laughs> to become king of Wakanda, and he pretty much just hands T'Challa his ass. Like, that is literally what happens, that's literally what you see on screen. Killmonger walks into t to, uh, Wakanda, with a dead claw. So he killed him. He's like, oh, you know that claw guy you were after? Boom. Here he is. He's dead. I killed him for you. Oh, and by the way, here's your ass, T'Challa. All nicely gift-wrapped for you. He literally whips T'Challa's ass during that challenge. T'Challa didn't even stand a chance. It wasn't even a fair fight. He... Pretty much killed T'Challa. T'Challa should be dead. He lifts his body up and throws it over the waterfall. T'Challa should be dead. Killmonger should be the new king of Wakanda. However, once again, luck comes into play. T'Challa gets lucky. He doesn't die. And Umbaku actually finds his body and brings it back to his village and throws it in, in some snow and some ice to help preserve his body. That way he doesn't die. Then later on, you got T'Challa's family, his sister, his mother, and uh, his ex. They pretty much steal the power of the Black Panther, the whole little serum there. They steal some of it before Killmonger ends up burning it all out. They go to Umbaku's village to give it to Umbaku to say, be like, Oh, please help us. We don't like this Killmonger guy. Here, take this Black Panther serum, come back with us, and defeat Killmonger. And that's when they learn that Killmonger actually, uh, I mean, M'Baku, has T'Challa's body there. So they give it to T'Challa and bring him back to life. Even though he got his ass kicked, for some reason they brought him back to life to go fight the exact same guy that just got through kicking his ass. Except this time he actually has the power of the Black Panther serum in him. So pretty much without that Black Panther power in him... He's just going to end up getting his ass kicked by Killmonger again. So T'Challa goes back to face Killmonger in Wakanda. And even Killmonger's like, no, the challenge is over. Why are you even here? You're not dead, but you should be dead. I won the fight fair and square. And he does have a point there. I mean, think about it like a UFC MMA fight where T'Challa was the heavyweight champion of the world. And then Killmonger walks into the octagon... For the first time ever, the first match of his career, and he just knocks out T'Challa. It's like, well, you knocked out the champion, so I guess you're the new champion. Even though T'Challa didn't tap out during the fight, he still got knocked the fuck out. But anyway, during the final fight, T'Challa gets lucky once again because the passing train stops the vibranium from working properly or something on the... Black Panther suits, and he's able to stab Killmonger before his suit, his vibranium, fully degenerates. He actually gets him in the chest, and even Killmonger's like, damn, that was a good move. You know, and it, it was. It was it was just luck. He got lucky and got the cheap shot on him to kill him before the vibranium came fully back onto Killmonger's body. So, T'Challa's once again King of Wakanda... But it's, once again, because of a lucky shot. And what's disappointing about this movie is that you never get that moment where you truly see T'Challa 
become the king of Wakanda. He never gets that moment where you look at him and you're like, yeah, you are the king of Wakanda. You earned it. You deserve it. All hail King T'Challa. You never get that moment in this movie. And that is just so... Uh, it's such a missed opportunity. I mean, pretty much when you think about it, throughout this entire movie, without that Black Panther serum and without that Black Panther suit, T'Challa is... He's nothing. And I want you to think about two other Marvel movies. And that being Iron Man 3 and Spider-Man Homecoming. In Iron Man 3, we see that Tony Stark is still able to survive on his own without the Iron Man suit. Pretty much throughout the whole entire middle part of that movie, we see that Tony Stark, his most powerful weapon, isn't the Iron Man suit. It's his mind and his ability to survive. And then you got in Spider-Man Homecoming when Tony Stark takes away Peter's high-tech Spider-Man suit. He tells him, if you're nothing without the suit, you shouldn't have it. And I really wanted Tony Stark to like show up in this movie and take away Black Panther's suit. And it's like, hey, if you're nothing without this, you shouldn't have it. Because it was calling for it in this movie. You needed that Tony Stark-like moment where someone, whether it was his mother, his sister, his ex, or one of the other tribe members, maybe Michonne, is like, look, we want you to be our king, but you are nothing without that suit. But anyway, you go back to Spider-Man Homecoming, when Tony Stark takes away Peter's high-tech Spider-Man suit, and is like, you're nothing, you shouldn't have it. Peter still manages to prove himself he still manages to take down the Vulture without his high-tech super Spider-Man suit, without enhanced combat mode, without uh, new web shooters with over 500 different web designs. He manages to take down the Vulture in his crappy homemade suit, which is just like a, a hoodie and sweatpants. And he still manages to take down the Vulture... And then you get that one scene at the end where he's sitting on top of the cyclone in Coney Island. And he's looking down at the Vulture and Happy and the FBI and cops and whoever taking away the Vulture. And you get that moment where you're like, there you go. You earned it. You just proved yourself. You are Spider-Man. And you never get that moment in this movie. You never get that moment where you can look at T'Challa and it's like, there you go. You got it. You deserve it. You earned it. You are the Black Panther. You are King of Wakanda. That moment never happens in this movie. And it's, like I said, it's just such a missed opportunity. Because you wanted this movie to be like that. You wanted this movie to be something similar to like The Lion King. Where you have this guy whose father died. But he goes on to prove himself to be worthy of the throne. And T'Challa never really proved himself worthy of the throne in this movie. And when you really think about it, Black Panther looked stronger in Captain America's Civil War. Especially that one scene after his father dies, and he's talking to a Black Widow, and she's like, oh, don't worry, we'll find Bucky Barnes, and you can bring him to justice. And he's like, don't worry about it. I'll kill him myself. That right there, and you're like, whoa, look out. Here comes the new King of Wakanda. In this movie, though, you never get that moment. You never get that I'll kill him myself moment. Why? Because he's always getting his ass kicked. And you can only hope that he does redeem himself and maybe even look a little bit stronger maybe during Infinity War. But with Thanos coming around and pretty much kicking everybody's ass, I highly doubt it. So anyway, those are just some of my thoughts on the Black Panther movie. It's good but it could have been a lot better if it had more Killmonger and a stronger T'Challa, then this movie definitely would have went from being good to great. Where would I rank this movie within the MCU? Is it in my top 5? No. Is it in my top 10? Maybe. I do want to rank all of the MCU movies before... Uh, Infinity War comes out, so look forward to that video. Black Panther, I'm pretty sure it's going to land somewhere in the top 10. Probably in the bottom, like 8, 9, or 10. 
but I'm not sure yet. I do want to make a video where I rank all the MCU movies. Anyway, what are your thoughts on the Black Panther movie? If you've seen it, if you haven't seen it and you just sat here and listened to all my spoilers, then whatever. But still, what are your thoughts on this movie? Do you agree with me or do you think there was a definitive moment in this movie where you could look at T'Challa and be like, okay, you earned it, you are the true king of Wakanda. If you like this video, please be sure to hit the thumbs up button and to subscribe if you haven't done so already. And until next time, I'm your friendly neighborhood ELT, signing out, Wakanda forever! Except for T'Challa, he needs to, he needs to start getting better and stop getting his ass kicked so much. All hail the Wakanda King, hopefully soon.